Hi, this is Dr. Ben Morrill. Welcome to episode 62 of Reptile Genetics Weekly. Got some cool stuff to talk about in the reptile genetics world. Excited to share that with you. And uh, as always, we'll talk talk a little bit about updates for results. Um, once again, for all the fast tests, those are going out pretty much every day. So you still have that one to two day business uh, business day turnaround once we get the sheds. Um, for sex determination with colubrids or ball pythons, that's about every three to five days. Um, so we're doing that a couple times a week. And then uh, for the panels, uh, those of you getting panels, it looks like it's going to be a little more than a week from when you see this episode. It'll be uh, probably mid next week by the time we can get those uh, analyzed and everything. So, so those are coming up again soon next week. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for sample updates. Kayla, how are you doing? Hey Ben, I'm doing well. I uh, had a nice long weekend um, doing wildlife stuff. Got to hold a bald eagle, uh, which was crazy. Um, so he is in. Uh, he is. Uh, hopefully going to continue feeling better at the wildlife center. Um, so that was a interesting, very cool experience actually. Um, yeah, let's see. I like it. Yeah. Uh, Clover is still making me wait for those eggs. So <laughs> fingers crossed that next week she will, I will have more rat snake eggs. Uh, the babies are doing good. Um, and I'm still sorting through sheds here, uh, which, you know, we're going to be doing a shed donor shout out at the end of this episode to talk about, uh, one of the many people who sent in a bunch of hognose sheds. So stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, no, we're, uh, we always say, you know, whenever we think we're going to have a short and sweet episode that it's actually <laughs> going to be like 10, 15 minutes. We'll see if we actually do that this time. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's get into it see if we keep our promise. Um, so uh, Clutch um, has, well, actually here, Ben, I'll let you do this part. Yeah, so through Clutch, they have, uh, very similar to last month, our special where we did a pick four, uh, they've programmed in so that you can get bundles, so you can get a two tests, three tests, four tests, five tests, you can even just, it's an additional $10 per test above that if you wanted to get more. So if you have animals that you want to get four tests done on, or five, or whatever, um, this is a really good way to save money on that, mm -hmm. and uh at, like we, we did with the pick four, if you want to, if you know, you've got a bunch coming in June and you want to pay for them now, you can, you can go ahead and purchase the tests and use them later on. Um, that's totally fine. And, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's awesome that they made this available where you can get this customized specifically the tests you want and however many you want and, uh, be able to get a discount. Oh yeah. Yep. And then for Morph Market, it's just a straight 25% off for the month of June. And so uh, that's a pretty cool opportunity. Jump on that while you can. And like we just mm -hmm. said, go ahead and uh, uh, if, if you would like to prepay for something you're going to use later in the year, go ahead and jump on that now. If you order during June, you'll get that 25% off. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a whole bunch, maybe you've got 40 or 50 or 100 or whatever that you think you'll be testing, and you have a, a large bulk order, um, send an email to raregeninc at gmail.com and, and we'll get back with you uh, with a quote. And if it's enough sheds, we can probably even beat the 25%. So, so yeah, let us know what you got and we'll hook you up. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, and of course, uh, we're, we have two weeks, we're less than two weeks away from the Pomona show now. So if you're going out to Pomona, California um, for the Reptile Super Show, Definitely come see us. Uh, we're going to be next to Randy um, of Dark Cloud, Dark Cloud Reptiles. Um, and you can bring us sheds. So if you have sheds for research or you've bought a shed test and you don't want to mail it, you just want to bring it to us there, uh, we can hook you up. Any, awesome. any other species we're designing new tests for or for new uh, ball python mutation tests? I know many of you said you've got some collected and just haven't mailed them yet. If you're going to the Pomona show, just bring them don't have to even worry about packaging them up and shipping them out. We'll, we'll take, we'll take bags full of sheds happily back to Virginia and or Texas. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and also we're official now, you guys, we have a big kid like set up. <laughs> <laughs> we're more just, serious about the show this time. Look at us go. We have a surprise <laughs> Sean there. He's, he's a beautiful model. 
Um, he's got like his his dad tennis shoes on and everything. It's <laughs> it's a great gold star. Um, that looks so awesome. I'm so excited. So be on the lookout for it if you're going to Pomona. Um, likewise, there is a uh, a pre show meetup. Um, if you want to talk about that, Ben. Yeah. So that to Tortuga breeding uh, brewing. Uh, we will have free beer. So come by, let them know uh, from uh, on Friday night from five to, to 10 PM. Um, you can come and, and just tell them you're with the RGI group and you get free beer and be Woo. able to talk and kind of get, get your mind set and ready and excited for the, the reptile show and the, the owners there. Uh, they also breed snakes and uh, also some lizards. So, They'll also have a table at the show, Kovac Reptiles, and to be able to see both us and them at the brewing company and at the show. So come say hi. Heck yeah. Uh, so that'll be 5 to 10 from uh, 5 to 10 p.m. the Friday before the show. So definitely come unwind after the, after a long day of travel um, after you get set up. So that'll be cool. Um, also, we're revealing what we are uh, what we're raffling off at the show. Um Randy of Dark Cloud Reptiles has very generously donated two uh, two snakes for us to raffle off. It's going to be one raffle with three prizes. One is this male Cypress Lester Cypress Lest Lesser. I can't. Words are hard. Uh, ben, <laughs> Ben, you do this. Words are hard. <laughs> Cypress Lesser Pastel Hatari male. Yes. Uh, so very He's cool. So pretty. Very cool combo. Yeah, and and big enough. He's ready to breed. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is a pastel fire lesser Hatari male that's also ready to breed. And and the reason Randy's doing this, he's got several Hataris and the I guess the the homozygous version called the Atari. Um, hmm. and so he's provided us with sheds and uh, Brittany Gobble has also sent in quite a few and some others have sent, you know, one or two here or there. Um, but we're currently right now working on getting all of those sequenced and, and analyzed so that we can develop a Hatari test. And so these, the money that you all will, will be uh, providing during this raffle that Randy's made possible, will just go straight towards helping to get this Hatari test done as fast as we can. Oh yeah. Uh, they're both amazing temperaments, amazing, like, so beautiful to see like i gasped when ben showed them to me uh they're with him right now uh just pretty boys both breeding size and um i mean you can if you win them you can add them to your collection you can sell them whatever they are yours to keep um so definitely worthwhile and we're adding in a third prize which is uh which we're we're ironing out the details for it but they're going to be uh your win testing um, through us. So even if you don't get a snake, you'll be able to test your own. So, yeah. So one, one raffle, three prizes this time. So you have a lot more chances to a lot, a lot higher probability of winning something this time. Exactly. Uh, we had a lot of success with the puzzle, the puzzle raffle last year. So we wanted to sweeten the pot for you guys this year. Um, yes. so yeah. Uh, speaking of, um, if you wanted the chance to win more tests, there's actually a uh, pretty fun vote going on right now. Um, this is on Facebook, but I believe it's going to end up on Instagram. We're going to share it as well. Uh, Kevin Pockrant has made this post and it reads, uh, attention, Rare Genetics Inc. is just about done running the test for Bamboo, Leopard, and Enchi and would like to offer one free shed test to the person that can guess the genetics closest of each snake one through five, which we'll show you pictures in a second. And then when the data is completed to run for banana, champagne, and fire, we will do another compilation. Um, so this is, I guess this is round one, basically. Um, happy guessing, happy Father's Day from the whole incubation creations team. Um, so we'll sh these are the snakes. <laughs> well, uh, you get to guess the morphs. Says, he says what oh. the pairing is there too, doesn't he? Oh, yes, he does. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, pairing was a banana bamboo leopard enchi fire to a banana bamboo champagne pos leopard enchi fire <laughs> so, <laughs> so here's a, a lot, bunch of white snakes yeah there's a lot <laughs> on a lot of different ways you can end up with a white and or albino looking you mm -hmm. know for, anyway very crazy pairing so yes so yeah, here, here they are and uh 
we'll try to put a link in the description for the video so you can click on it and go and and cast your vote or I guess your guesses and uh, see if yeah. you can surprise this time. Definitely. Um, well, yeah, we'll put the link in our description and our social media. Um, they're all five white snakes. Some of them you can <laughs> tell some things going on. Like number one, you can kind of see some patterns in there. Uh, and I blew up the screen a little more so you guys could see more easily, but they're, the pictures are nicer quality on the post, of course. Uh, and I but, think it's number one that has one red eye or one albino looking eye and then one blue eyed Lucy looking eye or, you know, it's like a darker eye. So that is crazy. That's also kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think just the concept of this is just so funny. I love it so much. Okay. I guess the morphs, they're all white snakes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, someone's got to win though, even if we're all yeah. way off, someone's going to be the closest. So exactly. So best of luck, go cast your vote, win some tests. Um, and so uh, in other news, we have a really cool post from ball Python genetics, Canada. Um, ben, you are our resident geneticist. So would you like to take this one? <laughs> yeah. So I, I really liked seeing this and maybe they've done others in the past and I missed it. I'll have to. Yeah have to bring some of them up, but as I see them, I'll definitely like to show these for you all. Um, so they made a really nice post giving some specific details about the hypo or uh, ghost mutation and uh, morph in ball pythons. And so it's a, it's a great little post to check out and they have some, like here's a, a uh, citation if you wanted to go to the actual scientific paper and, and read mm -hmm. some of the details and specifics um, but just you know some pictures you can check out and a little bit of info pretty cool uh i i love seeing i grew up in in academics reading papers like this but it was always about other animals that i wasn't that interested in so it's really cool to see it uh, this is Dr. Hannah Sadell and, and her students that did the work for the hypo or, or ghost slash orange ghost. And they did do some testing and were able to show animals that were sent in as ghost or hypo or orange ghost or Casper ghost. Mm -hmm. um, those all tested as being uh, the same. So last week we, we talked about on the show, uh, you know, whether things were compatible or not, this would be a case where the ghost hypo, orange ghost and Casper ghost all seem to be compatible. It's the same identical mutation. Ooh. But the two types of, you know, sent in as a type of ghost, green ghost and desert ghost, those are definitely separate, which, you know, we know from, from breeding as well, which they bring up. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, there are some people that do still ask. So is orange ghost the same as ghost or is orange ghost the same as hypo? So yeah, they are identical. And that's some of the work that Dr. Sadell did, but then also the uh, Canadian group, Dr. Rafi um, and uh, us as well as we've run a bunch of, of hypos and, and ghosts and, and orange ghosts. We see these same, same things to be true. Yeah. And I love seeing the PCR test showing exactly, you know, what we're looking at. So next um, we have our shed donor shout out that we mentioned earlier. Um, and that is Troy Quick of Mountaineer Herps. He sent in a bunch of hognose sheds that I've been sorting through lately. Um, I think he spent like, he sent us a note that said like, he spent like two months collecting from all of his animals. Um, and I think including babies. Uh and also he works with, he sent in Daisy Peltis sheds, I think you said, Ben? Yeah, yeah. He keeps Daisy Peltis, the egg-eating snakes. So that's that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Not very many people keep those. Yeah. And like he he breeds them. So he actually has, a, on I believe on his Facebook page, we saw a, a video of a hatchling Daisy Peltis eating finch eggs, which was really cool. Um, and, you know, he works with Honduran milks. He's got a really pretty uh, tangerine albino picture I threw up there, uh, Kenyan sand boas, uh, Calabar burrowing pythons. I think that was the name. Um, yep. So cool stuff. Uh, cool guy. Um, he's got some neat stuff posted right now uh, and look forward to seeing more from him, especially if he sends some stuff our way. So, yes. And thank you once again to Troy and to all of you that have sent sheds. And as, as we've said many times, and we'll keep saying, we can't do it without you all sending sheds in. So, 
his sheds are, and any of you that have sent in hogs, hognose sheds are helping us get a step closer to have hognose tests. And maybe we can have some come out during 2024. We're, we're hoping. Yes, please. Uh, especially like in the hog, if you're in like the hognose world or the, like the hognose world or the um, corn snake world, like the genes that you think you would want to see testing first in your species. Um, this applies to boas and anybody else too, you know, um, if you want testing for your species, what genes would you want to see first? Um, that also helps us determine what direction we want to go. Um, so yes. be sure to let us know. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I think that's about, about all we have for this episode today. We're keeping it short and sweet so uh, Ben can get back to all the analyzing he has to do this afternoon. Um, yeah. All right. So you got anything else? I just say next week, I probably still will be analyzing uh, by the time we do this show next week. But the week after that, probably right as we're about to leave for Pomona, uh, I'm hoping we'll have some some more exciting uh, news of new tests that we're working out the kinks. And some of them are brand new ones we're trying the first time. So maybe we'll get, lucky, get some of them on the first try. That would um, be nice. Yeah, we'll, we'll have some more information probably in two weeks. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks, Ben. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, um, and go check out those votes uh, on there. Guess which white snake has which genes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week, guys. Thanks, as always. Thanks. And outro in three, two, one. Mm -hmm.